drama in the Israeli parliament, although it isn't new. Far-right Knesset member Itamar Ben-Gvir was forcefully removed from the parliament podium last night after he called joint list Knesset member Ahmed Tibi a terrorist. Now, Tibi was chairing that session and the whole fight began during a debate about coronavirus restrictions. Take a look. All right, joining us now is our senior correspondent, Owen Alterman, to break this down, so Owen. All right, Owen, so uh, these are two parliament members. They're in the opposition. They're not in the ruling coalition. But many see this fight as just a, a small window into much deeper social and societal divisions that we see in the state of Israel. Break that down for us. Yeah, there, there are no shortage of fractures in Israeli society and fault lines. Natasha, obviously the Jewish Arab one is the fundamental one. And, we just saw it in the in the Knesset plenum, in the parliament's plenum. Although it's important to say that Itamar Ben-Gavir does not represent the mainstream of Israeli Jewish uh, public opinion. He's one of the two most furthest right members of the Israeli parliament right now. Took him years to even get in the parliament, of course, very controversial right. when he was added to some of these lists over the course of our many elections. At one point at the urging of former Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu because his views are so far to the right. So he doesn't represent mainstream Jewish public opinion. But he certainly represents a segment mm -hmm. of Jewish public opinion. He was doing it right there, obviously, theatrically, uh, playing to his base. Now, for a lot of our foreign viewers, I mean, <laughs> seeing name calling like this in the parliament seems out of the ordinary. But the truth is that this is the reality. I think I said it, you know, drama in the parliament, nothing new. Why is that the case? Why is it acceptable to see this type of rhetoric among the lawmakers, the people making decisions in our country? Yeah, I, I think, frankly, it's very sad. And I don't see how this helps the opposition when they attack the coalition. And that's the, 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 more, the more common constellation, certainly, in this Israeli parliament. Important to say, Natasha, the Israeli parliament does some great work. A lot of its committees do great work. A lot of its lawmakers do great work. Many, many laws are passed and go through a long process. In doing so, there is, par there is cooperation across party lines in the Israeli parliament in the way, for example, that there isn't in Washington. Often from people with very, very different political views, but have a common view on one specific issue and find ways to work together. So there are a lot of things about the Israeli parliament to recommend it. But the standard of behavior, first and foremost in the arrangements committee, this temporary committee that essentially ran the parliament until the full set of committees was set up, absolutely embarrassing to sit in those meetings. We all saw clips of those meetings over the course of the past month. We saw another example here. Why does it happen? Obviously, for someone like Ben Gvir, this is great for him, right? He gets the clip out there. He plays to his base. Also, to some extent, it's great for Ahmed Tibi as well, mm -hmm. for the same reasons. But obviously, it, it, it's something that may help individual lawmakers. I, I don't think it helps the country to have so many lawmakers trying to hog the screen and get good video clips for themselves to play to a narrow political base. Yeah. Uh, it's embarrassing, and one wonders whether there could be more strictures put in place. I don't know that the Israeli parliament needs to look like the U.S. Congress, which is right. so strictly formal, right? right? Think about the way those hearings are run. Yeah. But maybe it, it could. there could be some better sense of decorum so that episodes like this don't happen.
Well, this brings me to our current governing coalition. It has been only a month and a half that they've been in power. It feels like it's been much more time at this point. How are they doing? And how does the Israeli public view the leadership so far? Look, they're doing about as well as I think anyone would have realistically expected them to be doing, Natasha. Everyone knew this was a Motley Crue coalition with lots of different points of views in it, lots of parties, a very narrow majority so that only one or two members of parliament can essentially bring this government down. So when you have a dynamic like that, obviously there's going to be a lot of fighting. There's going to be a lot of tough moments. There are going to have to be concessions made to very, very small numbers of people. And we've seen all of that. But at the end of the day, as I always say on our broadcast, this coalition achieved at least one of its two core purposes the moment it was sworn in. Mm -hmm. And that was dethroning Benjamin Netanyahu until further notice Netanyahu is not Israel's prime minister. To get back left to win an election, form a government, not that easy to do so. The second thing I think this coalition wanted to do is change the political culture. Uh, not all that easy to do, as we just right. saw on our screens. As, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, though, what's interesting is that we are seeing both sides of the ideological spectrums here within the current ruling coalition, whether or not we see fighting like this, it is something that now exists, which is new.